Let's take a look at some basic knowledge of rational functions. We're going to look at how to find the domain of a rational function, and then we will also look at how to simplify rational expressions. So first, let's take a look at the domain. The domain of a rational function is all real numbers except for the values that make the denominator equal to zero. So to find the domain of a rational function, we find the restriction values by taking the denominator, which is x minus 7, and telling us that x minus 7 cannot equal 0. So really, you set the denominator equal to 0, and so then we have x cannot equal 7. So the domain here would be all values of x except for x cannot equal 7. So that is what this says. It's the set builder notation that says x can be all values except for 7. Let's look at a problem that maybe is a little bit more complex. So when you have a rational function like this to find the domain, you would want to factor the function first. So we would want to go f of x is equal to x minus 4, x plus 1 on the top, over x minus 3, and x plus 3 on the bottom. And if you need to find the domain of this function, then you look at the denominator and you find where the denominator is equal 0. So when is x minus 3 and x plus 3 equal to 0? Well, that's at 3 and negative 3. So that means the domain here is that. The domain is x can be all real numbers except for x cannot be 3 or negative 3. And if you want to try and confirm that, if you were to plug 3 into the original function, you would get 0 in the denominator. You absolutely cannot ever divide anything by 0. So, and you can test that out. If you take a calculator and divide by 0, it won't work. Okay. Let's take a look at how to simplify basic rational functions. So here is a rational expression. We can do a couple things with it. If we wanted to find the domain, we could. But in this case, let's go ahead and try and simplify the rational expression. When you're simplifying between a numerator and a denominator, the most important thing that you need to know is that you have to cancel whole factors. You cannot cancel terms. Remember, a term of a polynomial would be something like the x squared, or the 6x, or the 7. Okay? But you can't cancel individual terms, so you cannot cancel those x squareds out. It's very tempting, but you cannot do that. So, the first thing you would want to do then, since you can only cancel whole factors, is factor the expression. So here we would get x minus 7 times x plus 1. And in the denominator, we would get x plus 7, x minus 7. Now because we have factors now, you can look at whole factors that can cancel out. So because the x minus 7 is on the top and on the bottom, you can cancel those factors out. Not terms, but factors. So our final reducing would be x plus 1 over x plus 7. Okay, very important. And the most common mistake I see is when you get down to this, trying to cancel those x's out. But you can't cancel those x's out because they are terms, not factors. And so there is our final simplification. So just remember, you cannot cancel terms, you can only cancel factors.